Hello, my name is Guillaume and I'm a developer at Trust One Team. Today, I'll be giving you a short presentation on the validation of digital signatures in PDF documents. For starters, let's take a look at the way the Adobe Reader validates signatures. If you've ever received a digitally signed PDF document and opened it in Adobe Reader, you've probably noticed a green checkbox in the upper left corner. But what does it mean? Let's take a closer look by clicking on the Signature Panel button. As you can see, this document contains two signatures. This one is my personal signature signed with my Belgian EID. And this one is from the Timestamping Authority. More on that later. My signature was created using a certificate. This is an electronic document which can be used to authenticate or digitally sign. Both signatures have a source of trust. In this case, this is the European Union Trusted Lists. This is a document issued by the European Union containing information for every member state of the Union, telling us which certificates we can safely trust. When we take a look at the details of my signature certificates, you can see that it is part of a chain. It is signed by the Citizen Certificate Authority, which is in turn signed by the Belgian Root Certificate Authority. How do we know we can trust this Root Certificate? If you guessed thanks to the European Union Trusted Lists, you are correct. You may have noticed that my signature is not LTV enabled. LTV stands for long-term validity. This means that while my signature is valid, it does not contain certain information, such as the certificate status and revocation list data that was current at the time of signing. If someone were to try to validate this document 50 years from now, it may no longer be possible to retrieve that data anymore. Therefore, we add a signature containing all that information signed by the timestamping authority, guaranteeing that all the data necessary to verify the signature in the future is available within the signature itself. Pretty neat. Now let's take a look at how we can validate PDF document signatures using the Trust One Team validation API called the Signbox. For this purpose, we've created a web application which you can find at validation.t1t be. The application offers various other functionalities which will be covered in other guides, but for now let's focus on the validation and more particularly the PDF document validation. Let's upload the document we used in Adobe Reader to see what happens. As you can see, a report has been generated. We have two kinds of reports, a simple report and a detailed one. The simple report, as the name implies, shows you a limited amount of information about the document. The validity of the signature, which signature format was used, and the certificate chain involved, among other things. Now let us take a look at the detailed report. Obviously, there is much more detail available, ranging from the individual certificate status information to the timestamps and long-term validity. We also provide information about the status of the European Union Trusted List, and in this particular case, the Belgian Trusted List on which my signature relies. We will not cover all of this in this guide, but suffice to say, this is a very handy tool when you need to closely inspect a signature. Now, you are probably interested in trying out this functionality in your own applications. Before you do that, however, let's take a little detour. Our APIs are published on the Trust One Gateway Marketplace, and to consume these APIs, you require a few things. Let's head over to the Marketplace. You can find the address in this video's description. You can log in by using one of the social logins we provide, either Google, LinkedIn, or GitHub, or if you do not wish to use one of those, contact us by mail and we will provide you with an account. Once you've logged in and or created an account, you may have to enter an email address. Once that's done, we can get started. You're new here, so first let's create an organization. An organization is essentially a container within which you will define your applications. Provide a name optionally a description, 
and determine whether or not you wish to allow others to be able to request to join your organization. Once you're satisfied, click Create Organization. Once in your organization, let us create your first application. Enter a name, a version number, we suggest starting with V1, but that's up to you. Upload an image and add a description if you wish, and then click on Create Application. Now we have an application, but what do we do with it? Well, first of all, we need to request a contract with a service. Let's head on over to the store. The service that interests us is the Signbox API. On the API overview, we can see the base URL of the service and the Swagger documentation. But let's create a contract first. The Signbox API has a number of policies defined, on which we'll elaborate a little later. But let's continue and select a plan. A plan determines how you can consume these, the API. In this case, we only have a trial plan, which allows us to make up to 10,000 requests to the API a day. Let's confirm the contract. Once the contract is created, let's head back to our organization and application. This is the part that interests us, the API key. Copy the key and keep it close by for later. Congratulations, you've created your first ready-to-use application. Now that that's done, let's look back at the validation web app. Let's in fact take a look under the hood. You can find the source code on GitHub. I've provided the link in the video's description. The part that interests us can be found in the server and component folder. As I briefly mentioned before, the Signbox API has a few policies. One of them is a JSON web token policy. This means that, in addition to the API key, to consume the API, you need a valid token to include in your request. How does the validation web app do that? Well, like this. As you can see in the auth service script, We perform a GET request to one of the Trust One Gateway authorization orchestration endpoints with the API key we previously obtained included in an API key header. The token you obtain from this must be included in every request to the Signbox API, an authorization header prefixed by bearer. Let's take a look at the validation request itself. In the Signbox service script, you can see that all we need to do is perform a POST request to the Signbox's validations upload endpoint with the file provided in a multi-part data form and the JSON web token in the authorization header. Let me demonstrate. To do this, I will use Postman, a handy tool to have for anyone that does API development. The first step is obtaining our JSON web token. In the request URL, we provide the Trust One Gateway's token endpoint and we add an API key header with the API key we obtained on the marketplace. Press send, and there you go, your JSON web token. Let's copy that, because we'll need it in a few seconds. Now on to the validation request. We provide the Signbox PDF validation URL, the API key, and the newly obtained token in an authorization header prefixed by bearer. In the request body, we have the document bytes and the multi-part form data. We're ready now, so let's press send. There you go, the validation report, containing both the simple and detailed reports in JSON format to do with as you please. To summarize, in this guide we've seen how to verify a signature in Adobe Reader. We've learned about the European Union trusted list and how they factor in providing a source of trust for the member state's own trusted lists. We can validate a PDF document using the Trust One Team Validation Web App. We've seen the level of detailed reporting the Trust One Team Signbox API is capable of providing. We took a look at the Trust One Gateway Marketplace 
and seen how we can create the first application and obtain an API key. We've taken a look under the hood and seen how simple it can be to validate PDF signatures with the Trust One Team Signbox API in your own application. It only takes two requests. If you have any questions about this guide or its contents, or if you have a suggestion for improvement, we'd love to hear from you either in the comments section below or on our Google Groups forum, which is again linked to in the video's description. I hope you enjoyed this guide and look forward to watching more guides we intend to publish in the very near future.